Timothy Cardinal Dolan is considered to be America's top Catholic leader, and although many claim to know him well, one man knows him better than anybody else. That man, his brother, joining us right now is Cardinal Dolan's brother, Bob Dolan, author of a brand new book. You can pick it up on Amazon. It's called Life Lessons from My Life with My Brother, Timothy Cardinal Dolan. Good morning to you. How are you, Steve? I'm doing fine. Nice Thank to you. see you. Thanks for making the trip uh, out from pleasure. Milwaukee. My pleasure. Now, uh, this is a book only you can write. That's true. That's one reason I wrote it. There's going to be a lot of books about my brother in the future that other people can write, people more intellectual than me. But I'm the only one that can write this one. I'm the only one that can give you that behind-the-curtain peek of what, uh, of what he's really like. And what he's really like, Steve, is what you see. You know, I, I know you've met him many times. Mm -hmm. He's the most uh, joyful. He's uh, the most kind, generous man that I've ever met. And he's a guy who knew from, the, from a very early in his life I want to grow up and I want to be a priest. From the time he could walk, talk, and think. He went to Mass once, uh, Steve, with, with uh, my grandma. We call her Grandma Nani for some reason. So when he was four or five years old, he went to Mass with my grandma. And for the entire Mass, according to my grandma, he looked at the priest. He was fixated by the priest. And he listened to his every word and he watched his every move. And at the end of Mass, he pointed at the priest and said, Nani, that's what I want to be when I grow up. Isn't that great, though, that he knew that right from, from such an early age? He never, never wavered. Wanted be, never no. wanted to be a fireman, an astronaut. Well, you know, I think for about a week he wanted to be Stan Musial of the St. Louis Cardinals, <laughs> like we all did. Sure, yeah, yeah that St. didn't Louis. work out. Yeah, you tell a story about how when he was a little boy he would have mass at your house. We called it Tim's Mass. Now he's the oldest in the family. There's five of us in the family, and uh, so he's about 14 years old. Again, he knew he wanted to be a priest, so he had the mass memorized. So about once a week. He would call in the other siblings, two brothers, two sisters. Now, you know, I'm seven years old. I'm outside right. playing ball. Last thing I want to do is come inside and have a fake mass. In the kitchen. But because, yeah, but because he was the older brother, that's what we did. So he put a tablecloth on a card table. That was the altar. A Welch's grape juice was the blood of Christ. A little slice of Wonder Bread was the body of Christ. And he would literally recite the entire mass from start to finish. He had it memorized. What about a sermon? What about a homily? No sermon. Once, Steve, he tried to take up a, a collection. <laughs> <laughs> and that, you know, my dad put an end to that real quick. And we draw the line right <laughs> yeah, here and pass yeah. in the hat. I don't like giving it on Sunday. I'm not giving it to you. There's a great story that you start your book with where you talk about you were eight years old. Yeah. You guys were watching a Hitchcock movie, and your brother, very understanding about how scared his little brother oh, was. Oh, he could tell I was scared to death because this particular episode, the killer was a man dressed as a woman. You didn't know that at the time. Mm -hmm. But the end of the episode, uh, the man who's still dressed as a woman tears off the wig and says, as to what's going to be the final victim. Yes, you forgot about Sam. So out of this feminine body comes this very scary, deep, masculine voice. Yes, you forgot about Sam. I'm eight years old and scared the daylights out of me. <laughs> so f about five minutes after the end of the movie, I walk into our bedroom. I shared right. it with my brother Tim. And the light didn't work. So now I'm walking into a dark bedroom. And I hear the door close behind me, slamming shut. I turn, and I see my older brother with a mop on his head. <laughs> for, you know, that's the wig. He had my mom's bathrobe on, so that's, oh, that's the dress. And he walks across the room to me saying, yes, you forgot about Sam. Just <laughs> scared. That Forty years later, yeah. I still remember. It still scares me. Yeah, my brother, the Cardinal. And, and there you go. One day now, and now he's the Cardinal of New York. And there Who would have thought? There was just a few weeks ago where uh, Pope <clears throat> Benedict made him. Yeah. Uh, a cardinal. You, you don't say the P word, Pope, at your house. We do not. When it regards whether or not your brother might one day. We don't go there. And, and, and only, and I, I respect the people who bring that up because obviously they have great faith and belief in my brother, as, as we do too. Right. Uh, but he's my brother. Sure. You, know, you, you don't go there with a sibling. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there is another P word involving your brother, and it's politics, because yeah. this particular administration now is, uh, you know, with this contraceptive mandate, it really is a war on the Catholic Church where they're yeah. asking him, uh, the Catholic Church, to do something that they are stridently against. Your brother was on with uh, Bill O'Reilly last night and they were talking some politics and a whole bunch more here's a snippet from last night you know that every great movement in in American history is has been driven by people of religious conviction and if we duct tape the churches I'm just not talking about the Catholic Church if we duct tape the role of religion and the churches and morally convinced people in the marketplace that's going to lead to a huge deficit a huge void and there are many people who want to fill it up namely a new religion called secularism 
Right, and he was talking about that, where, so you know, your brother's got a big job. Yeah. Because uh, more and more people are growing up not very religious. Yeah, and, and that's, that's uh, you know, I, I rarely see him depressed. I rarely see him uh, angry or concerned. But that's, that's uh, this, this entire HHS thing has really got him disappointed and, and very angry. But that's a, just this, the future of, of society has got him very concerned. Well, he was very clear on O'Reilly last night. He's, yeah. He's not going to give up the fight. Not at all. He's not taking all. this to the man. Yeah. Uh, if you want a great book about the guy who essentially is the leader of the Catholic Church in the United States, uh, Timothy Cardinal Dolan, check out his brother Bob Dolan's book. It's called... Life lessons from my life with my brother. Bob, thank you very Steve, much. Steve, thank you. My pleasure to be Real here. Thank pleasure. you very much. Thank you, sir.